Hi, I'm Lawrence Oates and I'm going to take you on a walk around the historic town of Burton-upon-Trent. Um, we are doing this on behalf of the Transforming the Trent Valley Living Landscape Project, which is a heritage lottery funded project. So we're going to have a walk around a fantastic green corridor through the middle of what many people think is an industrial Midlands town and see how lucky we are. The Trent is important to the town because so important we've got it in our name that a very wide area like this will flood this entire area will flood uh, at times of high water and it stops it flooding the town it's a great natural defense which we don't really appreciate now so we're very very lucky to have this and of course where it's so wide like this rivers tend to be shallow because they're spread out so this was an excellent place to ford the river. The bridges came a bit later, we'll talk about those later on in the wall. But this would be an important place to actually ford the river. And so this is probably why a settlement happened here. We have the river behind us, this is just one arm, it splits into two arms. We have an island there called the Broad Home, the old Viking name, so home for island. And just here we have a new addition, a fish pass and a weir. We've installed a fish pass, well the Environment Agency did, I didn't do it personally, uh, so that fish can now access the headwaters of the River Trent into their spawning grounds. We haven't had a lot of fish in here because of pollution. Now we're hoping one day you'll see salmon and trout leaping up here. The weir is bypassed by the fish pass and we have weirs to create a head of water so that we've got constant power for mills. And you'll be able to see underneath the bridge there the old mill that it powered. Some of these were for uh, grain, later cotton mills, they were used as forges. All a mill is a power pack, just like you can get your Black & Decker and you can change the attachments. You can do that with a mill. As we walk along, you'll see lots of different features. We'll see some work done by Burton Conservation Volunteers that I lead as a volunteer leader. And we'll talk about how the town has changed. Uh, and this riverscape is massively different. So let's get go and have a quick walk and uh, see what we can get. We've now moved on to a bit further along the Trent Valley in Burton. We've got the modern library behind us and that's his water tower and this was built in 1866 because the brewers had massively expanded at that time. The water used in the brewing process doesn't come from the Trent. At one time it was so polluted we had the great stink and they had to do all sorts of things uh, but now it's uh, it comes actually from wells way down under the ground hundreds of feet down it's pumped up. We'll see some of those wells are still there and that contained gypsum salts, naturally, and that gave the purity of the water and its preserving properties that allowed you to make excellent beer. And now, I think most of the breweries in the country burtonize their water. So they actually add those salts to their water to try and copy the excellence of the Burton water. The scene you see behind would have been totally different. Big, solid brewery buildings, belching out smoke, the noise, of the coopers banging, all the smells of the mashing of the beer, the coal-fired uh, boilers. And here, in front of this wall, there would have been the railway running along, because it was all done by small local trains. Well, actually brewery trains owned by the brewery, instead of having a fleet of lorries. They would have been brought down, linked into all the different breweries and cooperages around town. So a totally different scene. The trains actually used to run at times of flood because you don't need to see the tracks, do you? You can't go off them, it's not like a road. So there's some nice pictures of that sort of thing. The, uh, there's the growing form, which is a sculpture by Merchant and quite often called the tulip by local people, uh, irreverently. And here you can see the steps. They're part of the flood defences, but if you're doing a job like that, Let's give it some added value. They are like a little seating area 
so that you could have a performance where I'm standing and your audience sitting there. So we built in outdoor performances before you even started. From here we'll move on. The old abbey is over there. We won't be visiting that today. There's very little left, unfortunately. We'll be going over the Andrasee Bridge, which again is a similar date, onto Andrasee Island, and we can talk about that when we get over there. A bit more old and new. We have the old bridge behind us, the Andrasee Bridge, which we'll be walking for soon. And we have a modern sculpture called the Monumite. You might recognize the distinctive shape of a Marmite jar. And that started in Burton because it's made from yeast. And the massive amount of yeast produced from the breweries was the starting product for making the Marmite. So it's quite a logical place to have the home of Marmite. Uh, we're now walking towards the historic Andrasee Bridge, built in the 1860s, when this massive uh, expansion of the breweries happened. And of course, a huge expansion of population. A couple of quick statistics. 1841, the population in Burton and surrounding villages was 8,136. 1901, just 60 years later, it was 50,386. That's a six-fold increase. The production in 1840 was 70,000 barrels. By 1888, it was 3 million barrels. So you can imagine the change in the landscape, the noises, the smells and the population. It was leased from the Paget family who were given a lot of these lands when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries and the abbey just at the back of us over there. And then this beautiful bridge was built so that you could access another part of the washlands so that people could have their recreation after a hard week in the breweries. All this is part of the flood defence. So again, it's a dual purpose, trying to make something nice out of a necessity. We're in what would have formerly been a little island. The ditches have dried up now, but there's still two bridges to access it that tell you it was an island. And it's sometimes called the Cherry Orchard, sometimes St Modwin's Orchard. It's all part of Andrasee Island. So a bit about why Burton is here. We had the ford at the river. I can't find much record before Roman times the Romans must have accessed it because Ricknold Street, a major road, runs just n north of us here. <coughs> uh, but it really started in the Anglo-Saxon town and Burton means a fortified farmstead. So there's probably a little fort near the ford to protect it. An Irish nun, Modwina, was on her way to Rome and she stopped in Burton and she found a spring of sweet water possibly that lovely water that makes the beer so well. And because of that, because it has really bad water generally in England, she built a little shrine and a chapel here to St Andrew. So hence it's St Andrew's Island, the biggest, the bigger part of the island, and we've come across the Andrasee Bridge. That then grew, the small abbey that grew was uh, wrecked by the Vikings when the great heathen army came down and the Guthrum in the 800s uh, until Alfred the Great beat him back into a draw and the country was divided into the Danelaw and Angleland or England. So here the abbey moved across there, it was reinstated and a man with the heroic name of Wolfric Spot became, yeah, endowed it and put a lot of money into it. That was at the turn of the millennium, which of course we forget now, it must have been a really major thing, a thousand years since Christ, a lot of people thought the world was going to end then. But now, instead, we've got this beautiful orchard here, um, and a little arboretum, but over there we've got the giant redwood, and my favourite here is the ginkgo bilova, a very ancient tree, they found one or two in China, and I think all the rest are now clones from that. They're supposed to have all sorts of magical healing powers, just like Modwina's spring. Right. So we've just left St Modwin's Orchard, and we've come now to a sculpture of the lady herself. 
this is a lovely form it fits in with the area it com they complement each other it's not an obtrusive thing standing out and I believe the top is supposed to turn in the wind whether or not it still does or whether it needs a bit of uh, oil who knows but just a lovely peaceful part to come and it's 20 paces off the path that we're leading we're following and so as we talked about over there St Modwin the nun who discovered the springs she really I would say is the founder of Burton because that's what made Burton so important having an abbey here having a shrine to St Modwin afterwards Burton was able to punch above its weight it's done that so often in history we've talked about it. it's the home of Marmite the home of Bass, it became the brewing capital of the world and believe it or not Poundland was actually invented here as well just walking on a little bridge over the Silverway which was an old channel an arm off the uh, River Trent coming down this way and apparently it got its name in the 20s and 30s it was used as a recreation area for, as a paddling area for children and they used to put silver sand down to make it look cleaner and nicer we've just seen some beautiful uh, damselflies in there with lots of wildlife so we don't want it too neat and tidy around here uh, we're now going to go up we've got the state mill viaduct ahead of us but we're going to actually dip underneath it and come around and meet it further on we're going to go down this way past the historic Burton sign which tells you all about the ferry and the ferry bridge so you have the viaduct which was built was opened a year after the bridge and that replaced the medieval ferry so that people could get across here a lot easier before this it was a plank bridge uh, and I don't think it was very good at times of flood if you worked over there and needed to get over here we'll still see the ferry cottage when we get over there but all this area does flood I mean up to the level of the deck of that viaduct and one year in 2010 I got a call to come down here where it dips underneath the bridge a lot of fish had got becalmed and stranded there because the water had gone down all around and they had gone to the deepest bit uh, we're talking about mirror carp this big and that I'm not a fisherman so that's not a fisherman's tail and so we got local fishermen to come down with their landing nets and scoop them up and pop them in the silverway which is deeper water so that they could swim away and escape so that one had a happy ending yeah. so we talked a bit about the ferries they will be going across the ferry bridge soon but the old ferry was a medieval originally uh, I think that's a newer boat that's shown on the picture and uh, I think it was 1889 they built a bridge to replace it uh, they had to pay a lot of money to uh, compensate the Paget family for the loss of the revenue from the ferry I don't know if the ferryman got anything and then a year after the viaduct was opened I think if, at one point you had to pay to come off uh, over the bridge half a pence each way or fourpence for a week which had been a lot of money in those days but uh, eventually Basses paid all the uh, outstanding debt so that people could then walk across free. It had closed at 11 o'clock at night and opened again in the morning because the toll man didn't want to work all night. So then it could be open 24 7 and a major asset to the town. We're just at the start of Upper Mill Farm, which is a different walk, I'm afraid. That's one we'll have to do another day. But this is an area we have cattle grazing on here a herd of uh, native Herefords helping to manage the land and it's been a real success story helping to keep the costs down uh, and manage in a natural way as part of it we did a project called reap what you sow because in 1967 a lot of the old water courses were infilled to try and speed the flow through because there's a lot of sewerage coming down from Birmingham, Black Country and Stoke. Some of the watercourses that were filled in, I thought 1967, that's living memory. 
So we got local people to come and talk and tell us their memories of the area. And then we did a series of these six, six of these interpretation boards, recording all that for posterity. And you can walk around, see these. There's a picture there, the Soho Wharf, which was just over near the back of Tesco, where the boats used to come down along the Trent navigation from Hull and offload. And just to our left, going up towards what is now Evershed Way in Burton, the major road, was the Burton, uh, the Burton Canal or the Bond End Canal coming down here. And that linked not directly to the Trenton Mersey Canal. And so you opened up all the markets of Lancashire and all the markets of Yorkshire and Hull going up the Trent. Just over the back here, there's what's called Peel's Cut. And we'll have a quick look at that from a different angle. The wall cutting across it, we think probably the stones came from the old abbey because they're a bit too good for a wall like that. And the waters used to come down off the canal and meet here. And a lot of the local people said it created little whirly pools. So I wanted to record that word whirly pool not whirlpool, it is in inverted commas, so don't say I got it wrong. And as part of the project, when Peel came here in the 1790s, 1780s, 1790s, to set up cotton mills because of the Luddites in Lancashire, Burton became a major textile town. We think of it as a brewing town. It was a big textile town at that time because the beer was too heavy to shift long distances. The beer really became a big thing when the railways came. Robert Parsley Peel, as he was known because his famous calico print was of parsley leaves, finished up with extra mills. He built one here and he built a false cut to bring water up to power his mill. Never really worked, so it became the first steam mill, uh, steam powered cotton mill in Staffordshire, and they used the water from the cut anyway to power the mill, the steam. You can follow this all the way around the area and there are six interpretation boards telling you about that scheme. Robert Peel was the grandfather of the Prime Minister, Robert Peel, who started the police force. Uh, so we still call them Bobbies from Robert. They were Robert Peel's men. So quite a lot of history there. Eventually that died back because the beer industry became so massive that took over and the railways were then taking over from the canals. Here we are at the entrance to Burton Mail Woodlands. This is another way into Upper Mill Farm, so like the one at the top, this is a walk for another day. Hopefully this will inspire you to want to come and do it. There's two interpretation boards telling you more about the watercourses that were filled in. And this is a large woodland planted as part of the National Forest. So do come and enjoy it. There's lots of fruit trees planted in the hedges by Burton Conservation Volunteers. Uh, we laid the hedge and planted the fruit trees. Quite a lot around here. Come and enjoy them. It's free fruit. It's a welcome to everybody. The one thing that isn't welcome is the dreaded Himalayan balsam. You can see it's hollow. It's pure water. It has a very pretty flower. Very small roots. When it dies, it's suffocated all the other plants because it's grown taller than them. And there's no roots holding the banks together. So not only is it bad for our native wildlife, it also means that the banks then wash away. So it's a big economic problem as well as an environmental problem. So please, if you see it, pull it up. <laughs> Got the two boards here, which will tell you a little bit more about it as you go around. And as you look that way, there is a wonderful countryside scene. Yeah, you couldn't believe that you were probably 10 minutes walk from the marketplace in the centre of Burton. And not, not many towns can boast that. So we can see at the top of the hill there, Winsell Water Tower, surrounded by the National Forest Plantation of Tower Wood. So at one time you'd have seen it a lot better than that. But uh, it's a price that I don't mind paying through all the trees and as it swings around over the woodland we can see the top of St Peter's Church which we'll be walking past shortly 
and then coming down you see the free car park at the back of Tesco's that has the old brick built pump house you can see the blue bricks down below through the floods and this one I think was Einkoop Allsops goes right down the wells and getting the water way way below the river the gypsum rich water that has percolated through all the gravel beds to make the superb beer. We're here on the ferry bridge so the other section is the State Mill Viaduct this is the actual ferry bridge and you can see up there 1889 it was built it was actually built by the corporation but they were charging a toll because they had to cover the cost of the uh, buying the ferry rights because it replaced the old ferry and Michael Arthur Bass the uh, first Baron Burton paid off the rest of the debt so it could then be open 24 7 and it was free for people to come across fantastic view over there but when you start going across I shall have to check your passports because now we're at the EEC we will be leaving Angleland and this was the boundary that Alfred the Great set with Guthrum to make that the other side was the Dane law and if we look at the local names the Anglo-Saxon suffix ton as in Burton, Branston, Stretton, Barton are on this side the other side we have Thorpe like Oakthorpe and Donisthorpe we have the B as in Ashby, Derby, Ingleby, Brettby which are the Viking suffixes so we've still got that division to a certain extent even now over a thousand years on now uh, just before we cross the bridge and into the Dane Law we have behind us Staten Hill Gardens and Staten Hill Pleasure Grounds a lovely spot for people to go and enjoy you'll see the steps there which were part of the flood defences showing how a necessary structure can still be beautiful it can have more than one use so that was a good bit of forward thinking uh, you've got lovely trees you can see the footbridge just the corner of it going over St Peter's Bridge we'll be crossing that shortly uh, after we've carried on down here and up through the back end of that park the river is particularly beautiful here and you always get lots of swans here very very popular with the public to come and feed the swans a major area for swans and it is a very much a symbol of Burton and in fact St Modwina her spirit is supposed to be carried up to heaven by swans so that link goes all that way back here we are in Staten Hill Gardens also uh, Staten Hill Pleasure Grounds sometimes known as originally there were two houses here the Vicarage and Staten Hill House and they were sold to the council knocked down in the 1930s to make this beautiful garden that you can see here the one of the ladies that lived in well the family that lived in the house the Goodgers Mary one of the daughters became the first councillor in Burton in 1923 the first woman councillor and later the first woman mayor in 1931 so we've had equality here for quite a long time and yeah so we still have this lovely place here the big swan I believe was actually originally just built out of general bits and pieces by the gardeners here and it's become such a symbol now as you can see it's lovingly restored it's painted the local people of Burton really take this to heart so a lovely place to come and enjoy a riverside view and to feed the duck we're here on the Stapen Hill side of the river and as you can see a beautiful spot very tranquil we're not far from the main road up there and just across from the water tower that you can see which is where we started so over there you'd have had all the factories all the smoke and the dirt and grime all the noise and more of the slum dwellings and then this side as we come over here if you go up onto the road there you'll see the very nice middle-class villas from the new rich 
middle class who built their bigger houses on that side of the river away from all the dirt and the grime. Uh, we've stopped here because there's a fabulous uh, fork in the River Trent and it's got some canoes going down which is a little bonus. Uh, this forms an island called the Broad Home. Again, that Viking name, Home. The Vikings would have colonised the island because they were boat people. So they'd be far safer on an island. The arm down to the left of the island takes you down to the weir where we first started and then this arm goes to another weir a bit further along and forms this as they go underneath the bridge and the broad home actually extends on either side of the bridge. That should be cattle grazed, they don't seem to be doing it at the moment which is a shame. But just a lovely tranquil scene and these are natural courses of the river, just natural meanders, these aren't engineered because you have the big flat washlands there's no point in engineering them here we've walked past a number of little features like the wishing well and the niches in the wall back there the revetment wall and we have this little grotto here very ecclesiastical looking and we think this stone was recycled from when they took the great bridge down the big circular semicircular medieval bridge that was replaced by the current bridge. On bridges like that you would have had a chapel to welcome weary travellers and offer them arms. Quite possibly these were taken straight from there and built in here to create this lovely grotto. So again very early recycling I think about 1870s when this was done. Same with the niches down there a definite ecclesiastical look to the tops of the arches, that sort of thing. So again, possibly a little bit of medieval history reused and tucked away here for people to come and enjoy. And a hot day like this, a lovely cool spot to go and have a sit down. So as you walk down there, you'll see that lots of the trees have numbers pinned on them and you can refer to this. You can probably get an app to download or a leaflet from the cemetery office. Uh, or you could take a picture of this on your phone and then by looking at the numbers and comparing the numbers on the trees you don't need an expert there you can start to learn about how to identify how to identify and recognize trees as you walk down but we're about here and you can see the pictures and a little description of them here at Swan Junction a major junction at the end of the Burton Bridge and down below us on the Broad Home we'd have had the gallows so that people coming into town would see somebody hanging there and take warning don't mess about here you'll be in trouble and then going across we'll be going down to the side of the Battle of Burton Bridge not actually on this bridge because there was a medieval bridge that curved around on the other side and that was the stone that was used to build the features we've just been looking at We've actually walked down onto the flood plain, when it's not flooded of course, uh, on the Broad Home. And behind me you can see the Burton Bridge. It's uh, a more modern structure built by the Midland Railways. It would have replaced the old medieval bridge. As you're swinging round, you've got the Ashby Road going up. And then we've got the Leander Rowing Club. You can see all the skulls outside beautiful state Hill woodland walk that we've just come along and that little arboretum the pylons because they follow the river and they're not on top of people's properties so okay they're not hurting anything here and again a lovely line of trees following that other arm of the river over to the flood defenses and the weir where we first started so we're almost back and i hope you've enjoyed your walk around burton and hope you'll get chance to come and do it in real life. Thank you.